All right, so concept five is discuss the earlier, uh, early development of Standard Oil and show how its founder, John D. Rockefeller, exemplif exemplified the ideal of social Darwinism. Um, so Rockefeller um, was born in New York in 1839. Uh, he came from a family with a Puritan Baptist background and was taught that wealth came from came as a result of God's will, right? So it was this early Protestant ethic um, that he was raised on. How do you know you're graced by God? Well, you're successful. How do you know you're not? You're not successful, that kind of thing. God helps those that help themselves. Um, at age 20, Rockefeller went into partnership with an Englishman by the name of M. B. Clark. Uh, the two were wholesalers of grain, hay and meat, in Cleveland. And during the Civil War, uh, the business flourished. Before the war ended, Rockefeller had accumulated nearly uh, $50,000 in money back then, which would be the, the, the value today would be a little under a million dollars. So he's a very young man with a lot of money to, to, to put somewhere. Uh, in 1863, Rockefeller dissolved his partnership with Clark and set up an oil refinery with Sam Andrews um, and experienced an experienced oil refi uh, refining technologist. At first, there seemed little use for gasoline. The internal, um, internal combustion engine had only been, had just been developed. But kerosene, another major byproduct of oil, would soon bring um, inexpensive illumination into almost every home. So between 1863 and 1870, Rockefeller picked up additional partners. In 1870, he organized uh, the Standard Oil Company with capitalization over $1 million. The significance of the formation of the company was not only the combined resources of money power, but also the, the coming together of men who had the brain power to capture control the oil market. Example, um, Henry Flanger was in charge of transportation and came up with the rebate and drawback tactics. The money power or capitalization of Standard Oil Company at $1 million supplied the base for a triple attack on Rockefeller's competition. First, Rockefeller spent heavily to make his plant the most efficient in the country so that he could undersell all competitors and still make a sizable profit. Often, he would sell his product well below cost in selected markets in order to ruin a competitor and then recoup his losses by charging higher prices than ever before once he had the market all to himself, that is, once his competition was eliminated. Second, as the volume of business steadily increased, the second way uh, he was able to um, uh, attack his competition as the volume of business steadily increased, Flagler uh, approached the railroads with demand that their company be permitted to pay lower freights um, than any other uh, co competitors. Railroad rates normally went uh, were public and equal, but uh, Flagler's scheme uh, included a plan whereby the railroads would return him secret rebates uh, from, from the established charges. Since the railroad competition in Cleveland was so intense, those who wanted Rockefeller's business, and everyone did, complied. By these means, and the introduction of Phase 3, the creation of the South Improvement Company, the Standard Oil Company almost eliminated all competition in Cleveland and gained control of about 20% of the refinery facilities in the country. Also, much of Rockefeller's, and we'll talk more about the South Improvement Company, um, in just a bit. Also, much of Rockefeller's success was based on his determination to pay nobody a profit. Instead of depending on the products or services of others, Rockefeller undertook to make its own barrels, cans, staves, and whatever else he needed. In economic terms, this is called a vertical integration uh, monopoly. So a horizontal monopoly is when you eliminate the competition in your field. A vertical integration is when you um, buy up subsidiaries, so you are supplying your all things that you're purchasing for supplying your particular industry 
you're you're not paying anybody. You're paying yourself. So the money inevitably comes back to you. In line with this policy, Rockefeller set out also to control his transportation needs. By 1879, most of the pipelines in the Appalachian field had come under United Pipeline Company, a, a um, standard subsidiary. With standard owning most of the pipelines leading to the railroads, plus the tank cars and the oil storage facilities, it was um, able to dissuade the railroads from servicing uh, eastern competitors. Those competitors uh, who insisted on holding out then faced uh, giant marketing organizations capable of driving them um, to, to, to the wall with price wars. Um, so, before we dis discuss the South Improvement Company, his third kind of phase on the attack of competition, um, l l let's discuss the reasons why it was created. Uh, intense competition threatened to cut down profits. Um, in 1865, Rockefeller received an average of 58 um, in three four cents, fifty eight dollars and three four cents per gallon for a refined oil. In eighteen seventy, Rockefeller received twenty six um, three eighths per gallon, and only seventeen one eight cents, um, not dollars. I'm sorry, fifty eight and three four cents per gallon of, for refined oil. Uh, in eighteen seventy, Rockefeller received twenty six and three eight cents per gallon, and had only seventeen and one eight cents per gallon for his, his overhead, manufacturing and transportation marketing, and barreling and profit. Expenses had fallen, but so had the profit. This intense competition threatened to cut profits down still lower. This was the laissez-faire economy as it, at its best, free-flowing economy with intense competition. Right? So this is the theory of, uh, of capitalism. Is, is capitalism is good for the consumer because it produces all sorts of competition. However, without um, the advent of kind of go without government regulators, also a aspect of capitalism is it will create um, it, it creates a need to eliminate the competition as Rockefeller probably did better than anybody uh, in the late 19th century. So. Um, Rockefeller and his friends looked with dismay on the lowering profits through gaining competition. Rockefeller felt competition led to a duplication of efforts and wasted resources. The human element destroys the balance which competition uh, brings. Another anxiety of the American refiners was the condition of the export trade to foreign uh, countries. By 1870, oil had risen to the to fourth place in the exports of, of the U.S. Every year, larger quantities were consumed abroad, but it was crude oil, not refined, which foreigners were beginning to demand. This was because foreigners found that they could import crude oil from the United States and refine it at home and sell it cheaper than they could uh, buy American refined. Thus, a need to eliminate competition, both at home and abroad. Uh, brought about the need for the creation of the South Improvement Company in the fall of 1871. So at, at this time, Rockefeller and some of his associates came up with a scheme. Um, they would secretly bring together a large enough group of refiners and shippers to persuade all of the railroad handlings of oil to give their new company special rebates and kick, kickbacks on its oil. If Rockefeller and the other refiners could get uh, such rates, it would be possible for, for anyone outside of their uh, combination, their trust, to compete with them. Once the competition had been eliminated, the company could then limit its outputs to actual demand, thereby keeping the price up. This done, they could then persuade the railroads to transport, uh, transport no crude oil for exportation. So the foreigners would be forced to buy refined oil. So the South Improvement Company um, was reorganized as the oil company um, heated by Standard Oil, uh, was headed by Standard Oil chiefs. The company included 13 men who together controlled one-tenth of the country's 
refinery business. The company controlled 4,600 of the 46,000 uh, barrels that were produced nationally each day. Uh, Standard Control um, Oil controlled only 1,500 barrels per day. Um, the South Improvement Company assured uh, the railroads that it controlled the majority of oil refineries. As a result, SIC negotiated a contract with three uh, with the three largest railroads, the Erie, the New York Central, and Pennsylvania. The South Improvement Company tried to take in every refiner who was willing. Again, in mind, keep in mind that the major goal was the elimination of competition, thereby controlling the price of the foreign market. Rockefeller went uh, to the owners of the refineries and said, quote, you see, this scheme is bound to work. It means an absolute control by us of the oil um, of the oil business. This is no chance. Th there is no chance for anyone outside. But we are going to give everybody a chance to come in. You are uh, to turn over your refineries to my appraiser, and I will give you Standard Oil Company stock or cash at as you prefer for the value we put upon it. I advise you to take the stock. It will be um, for your good, unquote. Certain refineries objected. Uh, they did not want to sell. They did not want to keep a man. They, they, they wanted. They did want to keep and manage their business. Mick, uh, Mr. Rockefeller was regretful but firm. It, uh, it was useless to resist. He was. Um, he told the hesitating. They they would um, certainly be crushed if they did not accept his offer. He pointed out in detail, with his gentleness, how um, beneficent the scheme really was, preventing the creek refineries from destroying Cleveland, ending competition, keeping up the price of refined oil, and eliminating speculation. Really, a wonderful contrivance for the good of the oil business. Uh, he stressed the benefits of the company, including keeping prices up and eliminating competition. Rockefeller warned, um, then that if they resisted, they would well, they would be they would be crushed. The the conversation took place after refiners agreed to a secret pledge based upon their word as gentlemen. Certain refiners objected because they wanted to run their own businesses. Um, in the contract, the South Improvement Company negotiated with the railroads, and the railroads were permitted to double um, their charges for hauling crude oil and oil products. The South Improvement Company alone was not to be charged the increase. The South Improvement Company, and not the railroads, was to receive the drawbacks, uh, most of the increase paid by a company's uh, competitors. In exchange, the railroads received a small part of the rate increases and the promise that the South Improvement Company would uh, distribute the patronage as evenly as, as practical over um, hitherto ruinously competitive railroad rates. Under um, the combined threat and persuasion of Standard Oil, which was armed with the South Improvement Company, Standard wiped out almost the entire independent oil interest of Cleveland in three months' time. Um, the South Improvement Company was the vehicle by which Rockefeller made his big jump. And although the company was in operation for only three years, it did its job. The business panic of 1873 also weakened the refineries who had um, overextended themselves trying to compete with Rockefeller. In the next few years, he was able to buy their plants at very low prices. By 18, uh, 1879, Standard Oil had cornered about 90 to 95 percent of the refinery capacity of the country and almost the entire world market of its product. Um, uh, since Standard Oil of Hawaii was not permitted to hold property out of the state, it began in 1872 to place properties or companies acquired elsewhere in trust, usually with he uh, Henry Flagler. Um, to get around this problem in 1882, all 37 stockholders, Rockefeller was by far the largest holder with 8,894 shares, nearly three times that than any other one person, and various Standard Oil enterprises 
uh, conveyed their stock to nine trustees, getting trust certificates in return. This set up the first trust in the sense of a monopoly in American history. Uh, so basically a trust is people within the industry uh, cooperating with each other like they did in, in uh, the, the Southern Improvement Company. Um, a monopoly is, is when um, one person controls the entire industry and he basically buys those people in the trust's shares of stock. Um, he buys them out and offers them shares of stock so they can benefit later perhaps. Um, so this situation lasted until 1892 when the Ohio State Supreme Court declared that the, the corporation illegal. At the time, Standard Oil Trust was dissolved and reorganized into 20 companies. But by informal arrangement, unity of action was maintained among these 20 um, corporations until they were gathered into a holding company, Standard Oil in New Jersey by Rockefeller in 1899. This action, allowing one company to hold the stock of another, was taken by the state of New Jersey in hopes of attracting new industry to the state. The ploy worked as trustees from Standard Oil began to transfer stock from Ohio Corporation to the new Standard Oil of New Jersey, capitalizing $110 million. In 1906, the federal government filed a suit under the Sherman Antitrust Act, and in 1911, and in 1911, after nearly five years of litigation, the U.S. Supreme Court uh, forced a more uh, complete disillusion of the corporation. The court forbade the corporation to hold and control in 37 subsidiary companies or to vote in their stock. Um, so that's basically John D. Rockefeller um, and how he became um, the, the most powerful businessman during the so-called Gilded Age of American history. Um, there were others that did similar, um, conducted similar practices, like um, Andrew Carnegie in steel and Andrew Mellon, um, uh, but no one um, came close to, to the, the to the skills and practices than that of, of um, John D. Rockefeller. Um, all right, we'll we'll call that quits for this lecture. And um, I'll talk with you guys later. So um, let me know if you have any questions, either by emailing me or asking me in class. See you there.